Today I find myself in my favorite vintage Mack truck hat needing to get into the console, the center console of this donor vehicle that we keep to keep our Pathfinder on the road. This is a 2010 Nissan Pathfinder. There's no front seats because they were taken out for another project, but that's another video for another day. So I couldn't find a whole lot of help uh, to get into the center console. Turns out it's super simple. So making this video in case somebody needs it. I'm here because I want these switches. I want to put heated seats in my Frontier, but that's a different story for another day. Today, what I want to show you is how to get this center console apart. And the truth is, I don't really know, and I couldn't find a whole lot of help. So I'm speculating, but I'm speculating on a vehicle that if I break it, it really isn't the end of the world. I don't want to, but I could, and it doesn't ruin my daily driver. So I thought I would make this video to hopefully help someone out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right here. This should just lift up. There should be four clips under here. Best guess that I have. And then we're going to take this off. And then we're going to lift this up and back. And I think, based on just investigation and some reading, that that should just about do it. So we're going to set this camera out and see what kind of damage we can do. So if this works out as I think it should, and it did, it's just an up and a back. And that pops out. Now we're going to go to work on the shifter. We should be able just to slide this down. I might need two hands. So we'll see. Should be able just to slide that down. Nope, I guess not. So let's try with this tool, see if we can do it. There it goes. And I'll bring the camera around so you can see what I'm seeing. There's a little retainer clip right there that I suspect comes forward and off. Look at that right there. And we're just gonna put it, you know, in our parts holder. And then I'm guessing, yep, lifts right off. And still push the button. I've got the key on in this thing. That's just how I store it. We'll put that in our parts holder right there. We should be able just to pull up. Let's see what it feels like under here. So we don't I don't want to break it because you know I might need this part. I have another pathfinder, that's why I have this parts vehicle to begin with. That pulls up, pulls back, and should reveal all the plugs and it does so we're just going to go ahead and start unplugging stuff now if you're like me and you live in a cold climate you always wait for a good cold day to do this stuff i don't know why probably just to make sure stuff breaks guaranteed when i do it so i gotta get these gloves off have a little more finesse in my fingers but not that I ever have finesse in my fingers. And there it is, it's all unplugged, so that should lift off. Well, I said all unplugged, all except for, I would say whatever this is. It's either a light, oh, it's the light. You can't see it, but right here, it's the light that tells you what gear you're in. So we're gonna go ahead and that undone and might as well drop the light bulb way down in where we can't find it that's just ideal and wonderful as well go ahead and retrieve that that's probably a hard light bulb to get your hands on that i might need someday there it is right there likely have ruined it by putting my hands all over it but Put that right back in there for safekeeping. And there we go. What I came back for today are these two pieces of the wiring harness. Hoping that we can pair those with these two switches and figure out how to make the heated seats work in a different vehicle. Time will tell. That's a video for another time if you're interested. That's how it comes apart. It's relatively simple, and now you know. And there you have it. We're all done. 
It's also the way if you're trying to get in to change your radio or head unit, as they call it in other places in the world. That's the beginning of that job if it helps you out. I don't need to do that job, so I'm not doing it. But if you get in there, there's four, maybe five torque screws. There's a bunch of bolts. You take those apart, and it looks like that's how you get to your radio. Go find somebody else that's done that. And uh, as always, I don't give advice. Just show you what I was doing. Now you know. You're probably no wiser, but you're definitely older.